to Aiden Slash Burger Bob here. Whatever you want to call me today, I'm going to talk about my new 42. It is complete. It is finally finished. Plus a little bit of bonus trial by fire since I finally got to use it on something um, kind of legitimate. So here we go. This is my 42B parentheses G um, M O and I think that's it. There's really not that much different. I mean, there is, but not that I can express through Bach um, letters and numbers. So, what do we have here? This is actually two different instruments and a new valve put together to combine one into one pretty gosh darn good 547 tenor. So, you guys remember my 42B from way back in the day? I set that off to get an instrument innovations ball bearing rotor put on it. Then you guys remember my much more recent 42BG, hint, hint, that's this bell on this slide, um, that I more recently got to cover the fact that I didn't have a large tenor. Um, and guess what? Those are now combined into this one Ultron uh, machine, not Ultron. Who am I thinking of? Wow, totally forgot. It's not Ultron. He's the dude from uh, The Avengers. Just kidding, he doesn't get formed from it. I guess he gets formed from stuff. Whatever, you guys get the idea. Boom, two instruments into one instrument. That's what happens when you buy a bunch of cheap instruments. Um, so what do we have here? This is my 42B bell, uh, corporation bell. Um, it looks really bad, but this is a pretty gosh darn good bell. It's nice and thin, um, easy to play. I really like that one. This is my 42BG bell, which is much heavier because um, Bach bells as a rule, if they are in gold, are one um, like one gauge size heavier. It's not like one gauge heavier, but um, those are, for instance, and I have no idea what the numbers are, those are 22 gauge and these are like 20 gauge or something. Um, I'm not sure what the numbers are. And they're probably thinner than what I just said. Um, but these gold bells are just heavier in general. I'm not sure why they do that. Um, maybe thin gold bells are not the way to go. But Jay Friedman likes his, and this also has a double soldered bell wire. Someone um, soldered over the bell rim again. I don't know why you would do that, but they did. So this is, in general, a much heavier bell than my other one. I pr kind of prefer the yellow bell, um, just because I do prefer yellow bells in general. But they're both pretty good. I actually kind of like how this one sounds in the low range a little more. Uh, this might be a good bell for second. So the big new thing, of course, is not so much the bells, which I already had. Um, they both played, you know, whatever on their previous instruments. I think they were pretty good before. But the big thing is this new valve. And of course, I went the super fancy route and had everything made to be interchangeable, which is actually really easy these days. Um, the fittings are all from OE Thayer, and they literally cost for like all three of these sets, or all, uh, all two sets, it's probably like 30 bucks or something like that. Of course you have to have someone put it on, but that's, that's a whole other matter. And this is not easy, there we go, cut it off. So the big crux of the matter is this new Olsen slash Instrument Innovations ball bearing rotor valve uh, put onto this nice little interchangeable section um, for me by Ben Hansen. We have the receiver and this part I think are the only remaining pieces from my old 42B. <laughs> I think that's all that's left. Maybe the saddle for this lever, but the lever is even new. Um, you can hear that. Nice and quiet, nice and fast. You can feel just a little bit of uh, um, just a little bit of grit in there. That's the ball bearings. You can just kind of feel them like start to move. Um, and that's, that's whatever it is. The tubing is all OE Thayer, I think, with some extra bits from M and K. Um, maybe Canstool, I'm not sure. Um, ben didn't really tell me, but you can see, like if you're familiar with a stock 42T, this is what that tuning slide looks like. Mine happens to have rose brass tubing for the tuning slide because Ben ran out of yellow brass. Not a big deal for that. I do love this beautiful sweep right here. Um, I think this is a really good looking valve section. You might notice that it looks kind of short, and that's because it is. 
has been built in, it is just flat of G flat. It's like 14 cents low of G flat um, with the tuning side all the way in. And that was not on purpose. I don't think he just kind of built it this way. So F is actually like right about here, um, which looks kind of like a more normal length, at least to my eyes. And that's not a big deal for me because this way it fits better in the case. And I can still pull out to about here and I can get a low C on the end of the slide. So really not a big deal for me. And with it all the way in, it just looks really cool. I like this short, beautiful wrap. I also have an M neck pipe. I think I've talked about this before, but the 42 is basically a Bach 36 and a Bach 50 put together. Bach 50 slide with 547 tubes and then a Bach 36 bell section with one half of an inch added to the bell diameter. So the original neck pipe 442 is too small. And so the M neck pipe, which you can buy from Bach, is the correct size, quote unquote, for a 42. And I just had Ben put that on because why not? And I think it made a difference, but I, I, have, I have no idea really, because everything else is so much more different about this setup. We'll put the yellow bell back on. So, thankfully he put a stud in here, so it's easy to put on. You see a couple slides on my table there. One of them is obviously the slide that came with my 42BG. You can tell because it's weird. It has like the narrow con crook and all this other stuff. Um, and the other slide is actually not my slide. Um, I sent my slide off with my 42B to get rebuilt, and then Ben was like, no, <laughs> this slide is horrible. It was so messed up. Like seriously, the slide tubes were just completely mangled. Um, I still have the outers, because they were not as mangled. I can show you in a second. Those are still right here, and they're actually in okay shape, just a little, couple little dings. Um, they are very ugly, but you know, whatever. So I still have these, but the inner tubes are completely trashed. So at some point, um, I'll have John Sandhagen build me a new slide with new tubes and stuff. And I have crooks and all sorts of extra things. Um, I also have a couple extra tuning slides. This is the one that came with my 42BG. This is the one that came with my 42B. The one on the bell section is another one that I bought. Um, I think on trombone form or something for pretty cheap. And since this one is reversed, you can put it together with a normal tuning slide. The Infinite Instrument. Um, this is my friend. Um, this is my friend's stock 42 slide, and it is completely garbage. This is one of the worst slides I've ever used. Sorry, Oscar, I love you, but this slide is so bad. Um, just not very good action. Like it's it's okay, but it gets bad really fast, and the blow is just really, really horrendous. Um, super hard to find the center. Just kind of nasal sounding. Not a good slide. Um, this slide is weird, but it does sound a lot better, plays a lot better, and has really kind of stellar action. I'm not sure why it's so good. When the bell section was so hobbled together, it was not a very good bell section. Um, I have a 42B lead pipe in here that I bought. Um, but I also have Shire's 3G lead pipe, which is huge, made out of gold brass, and my old lead pipe from my old slide, but it has thread, so I can't use it right now. I'll probably get back to that one at some point, because that slide actually played pretty well. Um, now I'm using my Greg Black New York 1.25. I keep swapping between the WIC 3AL and this, and I finally settled on this after literally like 10 swaps. Um, this is just not the perfectly balanced mouthpiece for everything, and the wick is much easier to play in basically every register, but the wick is very, very dark and covered, and I can't really get great sound on it that I like to get. And this sounds awesome, so I need to get a something .5, either a 1.5 or a 3.5 at some point. Um, so the trial by fire uh, portion of this there we go, this video is, I played this over the last two days for probably about 12 hours, um, and not in practice. I played it for a gig um, in this uh, very strange orchestra kind of pop thing, lots of, I played like 25 charts over a three and a half hour set. Um, and the horn performed admirably. I haven't talked about how this valve plays at all. Um, when I first got this, I was not super impressed. 
I thought it was a little bit stuffy. Um, and the valves I was coming from, of course, were much worse in every way. But I thought it would be a much starker difference between these two things. And this still doesn't completely impress me, but it's really not bad. <laughs> Actually, these bells are so different. It's kind of blowing my mind how different they are. Um, anyway, the valve is not super open. I thought it was going to be more open than it is. But it does play very well. It's very consistent. I know what's going to happen when I put the valve down. And that's about a thousand percent more than I could say about my previous valves. And it does have a super quick action. I don't have to oil this almost ever. Um, it is a little noisier now that it's on the instrument, but not a lot. Um, when I got it, it didn't have a valve cap or a screw here, so it's very, very, very loud. Um, but now it sounds pretty great. Um, and I had to play a lot of high stuff, I had to play a lot of low stuff on this gig. And the horn just played really well. I played pretty well, in my own estimation. Um, but the horn really kind of stood up to the test. Um, it was really grueling, really strenuous playing for a very long time. And uh, the horn worked. It was great. It wasn't hard to play. I didn't have to put in way too much effort and use up too much energy to play all these charts. Um, but it didn't like back up on me. It wasn't, I don't know, just really great sound, lots of volume. This horn can play super duper loud. I mean, just ridiculously loud um, on this instrument. Um, I had the trumpet players in front of me on this gig and they all kind of slowly scooted out of the way over the course um, of the set. Which is, you know, maybe not the best thing. They should have had ear protection. I think a couple of them did. Um, it was a very loud gig. And this really stood up to the test. So, we'll see. I haven't used this in a classical setting yet, a legit setting. But I feel like it'll be much the, more of the same. I can get a really huge sound out of the middle and low register, even with this weird con-ish slide. And that uh, just really impresses me. So I'm, I'm kind of happy with this. Um, overall impressions are pretty darn good. Not perfect. I do wish this was more open. Um, this, as a disclaimer, is a prototype. This is not the finished valve. So if you're thinking about getting one, I still would because it's still great. Um, mine just might not be as good as the production models. So there you go. Um, all done. I have so many little bits now that I can swap in and out. That's the uh, first impressions, really, of my new 42. See you guys next time.